anyways, we'll get going. So let's just um, thank you for everyone that's on today. And um, if this is your first class, my name is Kathy. I'm a watercolor artist. I also do acrylics once a month on Fridays. Um, that is a paid for class, but it's fairly inexpensive. I think if you look around for different classes, you'll see that it's really reasonable. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just get ourselves into art mindset. Just give ourselves this gift of one hour of time and just bring ourselves into the present. So with that, we'll just take a deep breath in and hold it at the top and release and drop your shoulders way down. When you do that, just release this area if you have any tightness here. Another deep breath in. And hold it. And release. Drop those shoulders. One more deep breath in. And hold it. And release. I just like to do that just to stop and steady myself and get into the focus of right now. We're, we're here together just to learn and play and try some new things. We're going to do a background first. So if you've penciled in your gecko, I hope you've penciled it in dark enough that when we put the colors on, you'll still be able to see it after. We'll find it. It just may take a trained eye. So don't worry, we'll, we'll do this one step at a time. So if there are things that are troubling you that are in the parking lot of your mind or in your mind, you just set that aside to the parking lot just for now. And just like you, I'm starting with a blank canvas, except I've traced my gecko. So that sketch was sent out. I think there's a link to that in the chat if you need to sketch that on your paper. So with that, we'll get started. So I'll just drop my camera and we're going to paint the whole background in lots of different colors. So I'm not wetting my, well, actually I am. I'm wetting my whole canvas first with a large brush. So I'm with clear water, I'm wetting the whole canvas. So right over top of the gecko. And the reason we're going to go right over top of this picture is because when we paint it, when we actually come back after the background is done, and we want to paint this gecko, the different colors that will show up inside the layers of the body is going to help with the disguise and be very beautiful. So there's no rights or wrongs with this. Your colors are whatever they are. So I'm using a fairly big brush. This is the number 12. And I've wet my canvas. And I'm just going to use a paper towel and just dry around the bottom edges. Because I'm on an easel, my colors might run a little differently than yours. If you're putting your colors on and your canvas is flat, then they won't run quite as much. So if you do want them to run a little bit, then just tip your canvas a little bit. So my colors in this, I've, I started with a, with a red. And so I'm starting with the red, it's called Brilliant Red. This is the fun part. We're going to put some color on. So I'm putting on a brilliant red and it's going to run. That's okay if it's running. We've made our canvas wet. We want it to blend and spread around. It looks more pink on mine. And I'm not, if you notice, I'm really not even worried about it being completely even. If it's lighter or darker in areas, I am nowhere done. And when I said you could turn your canvas and let it run, you can actually take your canvas physically and move it and let those colors just blend around. Now I'm going to switch to an ochre. So you can see I'm not, I'm not fixed on any particular color or any particular order, but I'm looking at ochre and it's going to turn a little bit orangey because it's in the red. It's mixing in. 
no special way to put it on. Just popping that color on. And now I'm going to turn my canvas again. I'm really letting that color blend. If it's lighter, darker in places, that's okay. Now that I've got that ochre on there, I'm going to go into my green. So my green is hooker's green. And I'm just starting to put some of that green. It's gonna turn a little bit muddy a little bit. <clears throat> That's okay. I can pick up some fresh, fresh ochre if I like. Go back, add some more green on the other side. So you have free. And I can take my canvas again and turn my canvas and let that blend. And see, I've got some red running down the side. When I turn that canvas, it's going to run back in. And I haven't added any blue to my canvas. So at this point, I'm going to add blue. It's an ultramarine blue. And I can put that wherever I like, maybe down the side. I've got a little bit of white there, pull a little bit from one corner. So this too is going to run and blend. So I'm not worried about having those marks because as I turn my canvas, you can see it's all starting to blend together. So I'm not worried about perfection. I'm just putting the color on and letting it do whatever watercolor wants to do. I'm just letting it blend. And you can see I have it upside down. I'll turn again, it's sideways. So it's still continuing to blend and now it's right side up. So, and if you've just come on, we just got the whole canvas wet with clear water, and then we started adding colors. And I have started with a red, and then I added some ochre. I've added a bit of green and a bit of blue. I'm going to come back on with my ochre again. I want some more ochre on there. It's still wet enough that that's going to move. And I'm going to pop in a little bit of red just here and there. So it's still wet enough that these colors will blend. I'm just turning my canvas, letting those colors come together.
So it's not about perfection. It's about putting the colors on and letting the colors run. And just letting them blend together. Take a deep breath, <clears throat> drop those shoulders. If they're up around your ears, just drop your shoulders down. You hold a lot of tension there, so just relax into the art project. No two are going to look the same. So if you've penciled your gecko onto your art paper, if you've used pencil and going on top, shouldn't make it run. If you've used ink and it's running, just use paper towel and just tap around the gecko just to stop that black from running. So my paint is still wet. If I turn my canvas, I can see it's still running. So I'm still going to continue to turn my canvas and let that paint run through. I want it still to blend together. I'm not trying to move it with a brush. I'm just letting the paint run by itself. So it takes a few turns just to let it blend in. Just be patient with it, it will blend. And if I have a marking like this marking up here, this marking, that's okay. That's where the paint has run. But I'm still going to do some work on the background, so I'm not worried about that little section up there. Whoops, turning the right way up. So I'm leaving this, I'm not touching this section here with a brush, I'm leaving it. If I put a brush on there, it will change my picture. So I've got a lot of paint on my picture, different layers. 
And I'm going to turn my canvas on its side. So I'll just hold it on an angle so you can see on its side. And I'm going to take clear water just with my brush with clear water. And I'm going to draw. So if you this is if you if you're done putting all of the color on your canvas. So if you're not done putting your color, then when you're finished, this is your next step. Take a brush. This is my big brush. I've got lots of water on here and I'm going to drop water onto my canvas. So when I do this, it's going to leave markings. So they look like, they look a little bit like um, a cauliflower mark. They look like the kind of marking that if you got it on your watercolor, um, on your watercolor artwork, you would be horrified that that happened. We're deliberately making this, this background. So if I turn it, I'm going to lose some of my shapes. I'll turn it really fast and you can see. So I've got some marks on my canvas. I don't want this to blend so much. Now I want to dry it. So I want those drops that I just did to stay there. So I'm going to mute and I'm going to blow dry. So at this point, blow dry your canvas, but blow dry in a low speed with your blow dryer a fair distance away from your canvas so that you're not disturbing the paint. So blow dry from a distance on a low setting. If you haven't got the cauliflower marks when you're finished blow drying it, we'll come back on and add some more. So let's blow dry it first, a low speed with your blow dryer, a, a fair distance from your picture. Okay, and I'm just going to mute for a minute or so. So this is what mine has come out to. So everybody's is going to be a little bit different. I've got some fun little marks up the top here. I've got some, some cauliflower marks here. I've got a fun little cauliflower mark that kind of spreads out around the bottom of his foot that wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to paint that, but it's quite nice and a little slash of color there. So some of the color cauliflower looks are a little bit lower. It's not maybe as many as on my original. I can add more now and then blow dry again. So if I add water and in, into my ochre color and pop on some new, new splotches of color, and then I take clear water and I drop that onto where I put on that fresh color. That's going to start to spread out And then I'm going to blow dry that again. Oh, Kathy, you're going to blow dry it when it's that wet. Is that right? I, I, I'm going to blow dry it, but I'm staying away from it. So I'm just going to blow dry and let that color move in and around my picture. Yes, I am going to blow it dry at this um, level of wetness. And now you can see there's some splotchy marks on my canvas. It looks kind of funny. That's okay. That's what I want. So my gecko is still in there and still visible. And for those of you still painting, 
I'm going to go ahead and read the card for today. So this was from Patricia drew this card. So truly sacred rest is soul care. We honor quiet time alone. We intentionally step away from the chaos of life. We unplug from noise and distractions. We relish moments of tranquility. This is from Dana Arcuri. And the message is pause, shed a layer, and recalibrate. So truly sacred rest is soul care. We honor quiet time alone. We intentionally step away from the chaos of life. We unplug, unplug from noise and distractions. We relish moments of tranquility. And the way we do that is to pause, shed a layer, and recalibrate. So thank you for that, Patricia. So that is our, our reflection for today. So now we have our gecko somewhere in the middle of our crazy looking background. And geckos have that ability to disguise themselves to match their background. But I'm, I'm going to paint the whole gecko one color. I'm not going to change it into different colors to match the background. I'm going to paint the whole gecko one color. So the predominant color on mine, I might say is ochre, it's a bit of pink. It could be, I've got lots of green on there. Um, maybe a bit of red. So I want it to blend in with its environment or its background. So whatever color you've got that really stands out, if you've got some purples, if you've got some, some blues. So we'll start just to paint our gecko. And I think because I've got ochre and red, quite a bit of it, I'm going to make a puddle of a combination of, so I'm blending a color. I'm using my red, my brilliant red, and I'm using ochre and I'm making a color. So it's an orangey color. So I've made a new color on my palette. And that's what I'm going to use to paint my gecko. So I'll start with the head. And I don't want to paint in the center. I want to paint, well, maybe I, if I use red, maybe you'll be able to see it better. It's really blending in, it's too blended. So you can't see it. Let me find this gecko. Actually, I'll start with his fingers. There's a little, little paw or little, little arm. I'll paint the fingers on the other side. So I've just got his little hands. And then I'll paint his arm. So he's starting to emerge. And I want to leave the little spaces in between. I don't want to paint that connection. I want a space in between. So I'll go back to his other little arm. And if you go out of the lines a little bit and your arm gets a little bit bigger, that's okay. So there's his little arms.
So we want there to be a space in between the body parts. So that's what helps the different colors for disguising. There's the starting of the head. And there's there's the gecko's head. It looks like eyes and two arms and little toes or fingers. And if something happens and you go on a different part, you have the drawing, so you will be able to duplicate this. It's easy to get some of the lines mixed up. There's a lot of little curves and curls in there. So just take a deep breath and drop those shoulders. It's not about perfection. So just keep working one little piece at a time, trying to leave space in between. That's what helps this gecko just disappear in the background. Now mine's a little bit brighter. It might not be able to disguise right now, but if I had done it ochre, it would have certainly disappeared. But it's also tricky if you're using a lighter color to see where things fit. Oh, there's little toes. And another leg. And then that triangular bone starts to put body and tail together, a little diamond shape. And then the tail in the shape of those chevrons.
Someone has said they can't wait to see the collage. Me neither. I love the collages. <laughs> I think they're great. I know we'll all have a slight different variation of colors, of, of um, backgrounds. It'll be really cool. So remember, you're still painting. Just take a deep breath. Don't hold your breath. Let the paint just flow. Drop your shoulders a little bit. So if you need to, take a breather. If you need to rinse your buckets, we've got a couple of minutes. The next, um, the next thing we'll do is just decide <clears throat> Excuse me, where are we going to put our artist signature? So we're done a little bit early. That's okay. So I'm going to put my signature right down the bottom near that little foot. And someone said you could make several backgrounds like this and then just paint over them. You absolutely can. It's not important to have the full, and this is what we'll cover on Thursday, is it's not important to cover the full canvas in, in the same background. So I'll just demonstrate that. If I were to I want to paint a floral garden and some rocks and a sky, And I'm only doing this because I've got a few minutes, but if I was to take my sky and just paint my sky, whatever color I wanted it to be, put a few clouds in my sky here and there. Maybe I want a little bit of sunlight in there somewhere, so I'll add just a little bit. Just a little touch or light. And then if I wanted this to be a flower bed region over here, I could do this background of what we just did. So I've got multiple colors, different layers. I'm just adding that on there. Then on the other side, if I wanted it to be rocky, I could just do some slices of rocks. But this piece here that is my flowers, I may want to do the same technique that we just did for our background, where I'm going to drop on some water droplets and blow that dry or let it dry. And it will give me, and I'll show you before we're finished what that's going to look like, because it's just got to dry. So I'll just let that dry for a minute and show you. So your whole background doesn't need to be all the same color. It can be different colors in different sections. And as I said, that's what we'll work on on Thursday. We have a couple of minutes. I'm just going to blow this dry so I can show you before we're done. I'll just mute for a second. OK, so this picture that I've just done, I've done several different backgrounds. So I painted just, just the blue at the top. I put some little dots of clouds, a little bit of yellow sky. But I've done the same effect here where I've got little droplets of water sitting. So that could be a nice little flower bed, or I could change this and make this into the side of a mountain if I wanted to. But it's different textures on the same canvas, so it doesn't always have to be exactly the same. So keep that in mind that you can do various um, textures on one painting. All right. Thanks, guys.